Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much once again for the privilege of studying your word. We invite the Holy Spirit to lead us, to guide us, to teach us your truth, Lord, to make us free. We love your word. We love you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. Prepare our hearts even now to receive of your word and teach us the truth. You said you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. We ask and pray all these things in Jesus' name and give thanks. Amen. Well, we're looking at a man named Lamech. You can turn with me, if you will, to Genesis chapter 4. In our last study, we looked at him as being the first two-timer. We're going to see something else about him that we need to avoid in our lives. And the title of this study is Man of Violence, or we could say Man of Vengeance. Not only was Lamech a two-timer, taking a, unto himself two wives. He's a man of violence. He's, he's a man of vengeance. And there's some things that we need to uh, consider as we look at his life. Let's begin once again uh, reading in Genesis chapter 4, verses 16. But this time, and instead of stopping at verse 19, we're going to read on down to verse 24. It says, And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod and on the east of Eden. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Enoch. And built, he built a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch. And unto Enoch was born Irad, and Irad begat Mahujael, and Mahujael begat Methuselah, and Methuselah begat Lamech. And Lamech took unto him two wives. The name of the one was Adah, and the name of the other Zillah. And Adah bare Jabal, he was the father of such as dwell in tents, and of such as have cattle. And his brother's name was Jubal, he was the father of all such as handle the harp and the organ. And Zillah, she also bare Tubal Cain, an instructor in every artificer in brass and iron, and the sister of Tubal Cain was Namah. And Lamech said unto his wives, Adah and Zillah, Hear my voice, ye wives of Lamech. Hearken unto my speech, for I have slain a man to my wounding and a young man to my hurt. If Cain shall be avenged sevenfold, truly Lamech seventy and sevenfold. We're looking at this man of violence, this man of vengeance, and we're going to look at uh, three things. First, we're going to look at threatening the sword. Then we're going to look at toting the sword. And then we're going to look at trusting the sword. Before we jump into the first topic of our study, threatening the sword, I want to draw your attention to something that I believe is interesting and appropriate to our study and connecting as we look at uh, the line of Cain, and we look at this violence or vengeance in the life of Lamech. In our last study, we looked at Lamech taking on a second wife, Adah being his first and Zillah being his second. And notice in verse 22 that Zillah, the second wife that he took upon himself, bears a son. And notice the name, Tubal Cain. Tubal Cain. Interesting that Cain would be in his name or a part of his name. Remember, Lamech is the fifth and the last generation mentioned of the Cainites, those descendants of Cain, and, and he names his son Tubal Cain. And it's interesting, the name Tubal Cain means, Thou wilt be brought of Cain. Now, we have a saying that's familiar to us. You've probably heard it. It's not mentioned a lot, but, but it has been used. And that saying, that phrase is, Raising Cain. We use it to describe an individual that's acting out of control, doing things 
and an ungodly sort. Lamech is that type of individual. But he names his son Tubal-Cain, and notice that Tubal-Cain is an instructor of every artificer in brass and iron. He, he makes cutting instruments with brass and iron. He's a metalsmith. He's, he's an iron worker. You, you might say a blacksmith. The, the word instructor there means a wetter or a sharpener. Many believe that not only did he make cutting tools, but there's a good possibility that he made weapons as a result of his trade, his craft. And it's interesting to consider that when we're thinking about this man, Lamech. Because notice what Lamech says. He calls his two wives to himself, and he, he, he mentions what many scholars call the Song of Vengeance. It's, it's, it's the oldest poetic fragment in the Bible. And he says this, I have slain a man. I have taken the life of an individual. And he says this, To my wounding and a young man to my hurt. Now, other translations make this a little bit more clear. This individual, this, this man, this young man, hurt or wounded Lamech. In the Hebrew, that word can mean bruise. So there was a bruise given, there was a stripe given, there was, there was some type of wound or hurt caused by this young man in Lamech. Well, his payment for this hurt was the death sentence. He takes the life of this young man. Now, there are some scholars that call this self-defense. I personally am not one who's willing to say this is self-defense because when a person hurts you or harms you, that's not necessarily cause to take that individual's life. We're not told that Lamech's life was threatened. We're just told that he was hurt. He took it upon himself to take the life of this individual, and he's, he's boasting about it. He's, he's arrogant in this song. He, he's unrepentant. He's bragging, if you will. And it's interesting that the, the, the word Lamech, the name Lamech, means powerful. This man is a powerful man, at least in his own mind, and he was hurt by a young man, and so he took that man's life. And if that wasn't bad enough, he's now bragging about it. He's, he's proud of it. And he distorts a truth from our previous studies in, in, in the same chapter 4 of Genesis verse 15, because Cain said, well, well, well they're gonna, whoever finds me is going to slay me. And the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. That's the Lord speaking. That's what the Lord said unto Cain. We have no record here with Lamech of the Lord speaking on this manner at all. So we're left to assume that this not sevenfold vengeance, but a seventy-sevenfold vengeance is not to be taken of the Lord but of Lamech, or one of Lamech's descendants. He's saying, yeah, I took his life, and if anybody wants to do anything about it, well, you better watch out, because I'll take 77-fold vengeance or revenge upon you. See, he's a man who is a man of violence, a man of vengeance. He threatens with the sword. He's a powerful man. He, he's... He's able to take care of himself, and he's bragging to his wives about it. This, this goes in line with what Peter asks Jesus in Matthew chapter 18, Lord, how often should I forgive my brothers? Seven times? And Jesus says, I, I'm not saying seven times, but seventy times seven. Bringing our attention back to this episode where where Lamech is bragging about how 
he'll take matters in his own hands and, and he's justified of, of taking vengeance. So we see this man who threatens the sword. Now while we're talking about this idea of threatening the sword, and we don't know for sure if he used a sword in, in this case. I just think it's interesting that his son was one who sharpened iron and brass instruments. And it's very possible in my mind that some of those tools were weapons. It's possible that he used something that his son invented to take the life of this young man. And so with that in mind, I, I take the liberty to, to use the phrase threatening the sword. And we have people today who, well, they think they're something because they have a weapon and they're boastful and braggadocious about it. And, and they go around claiming, well, I'll do this and I'll do that. And Lamech is that type of individual. And it's that type of individual that causes many in society to be afraid of the sword. And, and, and think that, well, the sword's not something that should be used or touched. Which brings me to the second point of our study as we consider this man. And that is toting the sword, carrying the sword, if you will. Now, many will say, well, the Bible says in Exodus chapter 20, thou shalt not kill. So we can't kill. But upon further study of that verse in the Hebrew language, it doesn't say thou shalt not kill. It says thou shalt not murder. Now, God takes serious the life of individuals and in Genesis chapter 9 in verse 6 I want to read this passage of scripture he says whoso sheddeth man's blood by man shall his blood be shed for in the image of God made he a man it's a serious and somber thing to consider taking the life of an individual and God takes that very very seriously it's the reason that Cain is cursed he's a murderer Capital punishment is clearly taught in the scripture concerning murder, the taking of one's life. But there are those who would say that the Christian, the Christian is not to tote the sword. The Christian is, is not to use a sword. The Christian is, is to not partake in any type of violence. And although Lamech is a man of violence, a man of vengeance, I don't believe that the scripture instructs us as Christians, as believers, not to tote the sword. I do believe that a clear case can be made in the scripture for self-defense. See, threatening the sword, well, that's defiance. That's, that's an individual who could care less about the life of someone else. Toting the sword, I, I say that in the sense of defense. Being able to defend oneself or one's family. In Exodus chapter 22, I, I want to read a passage of Scripture that I believe clearly pictures what, what I'm discussing here. In Exodus 22, verses 2 and 3, it says this, If a thief be found breaking up, and be smitten that he die, there shall no blood be shed for him. If the sun be risen upon him, there shall be blood shed for him, for he should make full restitution. If he have nothing, then he shall be sold for his theft. So, uh, the scripture is, is making clear that in the middle of the night, it's dark, not day, the sun's not up, and one breaks into another's house and the homeowner takes the life of the thief because it is dark, because he doesn't know why or who this individual is and what purpose this individual has broken into the home and his life be taken, there should be no blood shed. There's, there, there's, there's going to be no punishment for the one who took the life because it was in self-defense. Now, the context is a thief, and that's why the next verse says, if the sun be up, though, it's a different scenario. If in the middle of the day, and it's clearly to be seen, that it is a thief coming in. Notice, 
the context is a thief, not a murderer, not one trying to take someone's life, not a rapist, nothing along those lines. This is clearly a thief that has come in. Then it is not a case of self-defense. It is not okay to take that individual's life. It's along the same lines as what we're discussing with Lamech, this man of violence. This young man in some way bruised him, hurt him. And he took his life. And I believe it can be argued that he went further than necessary in this. And his bragging about it, I believe, makes it clear that that was his intent. And he was intending to go further than that, if necessary, if anyone else should show up concerning the matter. So, self-defense is, is clearly portrayed here in the scripture. There are many examples. I, I can turn to Nehemiah chapter Four. Nehemiah, as you know, was the man who went to Jerusalem to help build the wall of Jerusalem. They were in, in rubble and, and they were torn down and there was resistance. There were those who came and threatened their lives if they continued the work. And hear the words of Nehemiah. He says, And I looked and arose up and I said unto the nobles and to the rulers and to the rest of the people, Be not afraid of them. Remember the Lord, which is great and terrible and fight. He says, fight. Fight for your brethren, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your houses. So Nehemiah, this man of God, tells them to fight. To fight. Now there are those who will say, well, yeah, that's the Old Testament. That's the Old Testament. Jesus came in the New Testament, and he says, turn the other cheek, which in context of the scripture and knowing the culture of the day, he's talking about insults. Those type of things, he's not talking about someone who is literally trying to lay hold upon and, and harm one physically, but, but <clears throat> ridicule and, and, and those type of things. But turn with me to Luke chapter 22. I want to read an interesting passage of Scripture for those who would, would argue, well, Jesus clearly taught that the Christian was not to ever engage in any type of violent behavior. Well, in Luke chapter 22, verses 35 and 36, Jesus is talking to his disciples, and he said unto them, When I sent you without purse and script and shoes, lacked ye anything? And they say, Nothing. And he said unto them, But now, but now, he's on his way to the cross, he says, But now he that hath a purse, let him take it. And likewise his script, and he that hath no sword, well, he doesn't say, well, that's good, because I don't want you involved in any type of violence. He says, he that hath no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. And buy one. So, I believe there's a clear argument that can be made that there's nothing wrong with toting the sword. The scripture is clear, I believe, on self-defense and one's right, God-given right, to defend himself. But threatening the sword, there's no place for that in the life of the believer. Lamech is a defiant man. He's not a defender. He's defiant. Now, let's move on to the last topic of our discussion, and that is trusting the sword. Trusting the sword. The Bible says a lot about violent men. As a matter of fact, not only was Lamech this man of violence, this was one of the reasons the Lord destroyed the earth with the flood. Just two chapters later in Genesis chapter 6 verse 11, it says the earth was corrupt before God and the earth was filled with violence filled with violence. Violence has no place in the life of God's men. In Proverbs chapter 1, verse 16, we read about violence as well. Proverbs 1, 16 says this about ungodly and wicked men. He says, For their feet run to evil and make haste to shed blood. In the same book, Proverbs 3, verse 31, 30 and 31, it says, Strive not with a man without a cause, if he have done thee no harm. Envy thou not the oppressor. That word in the Hebrew means a man of violence. 
Don't envy a man of violence and choose none of his ways. In Romans 3, 15, Paul quotes from Isaiah and he talks about those whose feet run quick to shed blood. We live in a very violent world. Men who threaten the sword. There's a big difference, I believe, in threatening the sword and toting the sword. Those who threaten the sword, that's, that's where their faith rests. That's what they believe in. And there are many of individuals who, who do put their trust, if you will, in the sword. And, and the scripture is clear about trusting the sword. There's a difference in toting the sword and trusting the sword. The Bible in Psalm 18, 34 and Psalm 144, verse 1, David says, The Lord teacheth my hands to war and my fingers to fight. David was a man who knew how to fight. And there are those who are soldiers, there are those who are police officers, those involved in security, those who I would call sheepdogs, individuals who, who protect, they feel a responsibility to protect their family and those around. And I believe there's support for that in the scripture. But those individuals need to guard against trusting the sword. In, in Nehemiah 4.14 that we just read, Nehemiah first says, Remember the Lord and fight. Fighting at times is necessary, but remembering the Lord, trusting the Lord, that is the most important thing. In, in the book of Psalms, Psalm 44, we read this. Psalm 44, verses 6 and 7. He says, For I will not trust in my bow, neither shall my sword save me. But thou hast saved us from our enemies, and hast put them to shame that hated us. In Samuel, we read, Well, the Lord, the Lord will deliver. Matter of fact, let me, let me read that in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 47. It says this, <clears throat> And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. Trusting in the sword is foolish. Now, the Bible says, and some would argue, well, the Bible says an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. And that's true, it does, but it's in context for judicial matters, not for vigilantes, not for vengeance. The Bible does teach capital punishment, but the Lord has, has designed government to take care of those matters. If you remember, right after Jesus tells the disciples to go get a sword, Peter was one of those disciples who was carrying a sword, and he drew a sword at a time when he shouldn't. He cut off the servant of Malchus's ear, and Jesus said, put your sword up. Those who live by the sword will die by the sword. So there are, there are times in the scripture that we should fight. There are times to use the sword, and there are times not to use the sword. It's, it's a grave responsibility for the individual who would tote the sword. Lamech is a man who, well, he trusts in the sword. And not only does he trust in it, he threatens the sword. I believe that a believer has the right to tote the sword, but one must do so with wisdom, not like Lamech. It's interesting that Cain is a murderer, and the last mentioned descendant there, a generation, is also a murderer. These men of Violence And in Romans 12, 19, the Lord makes it clear. Vengeance is mine, I will repay. In our last study of Lamech, we talked about bishops in the New Testament, those leaders, men who would be leaders within the church. They are not to be soon angry, not to be strikers. They're not violent men. So as we consider Lamech, 
I believe we have two choices. I have made my choice and I hope and pray that you will make the same. We can be like Lamech. We can be men of violence, men of vengeance, men who threaten the sword and men who trust in the sword. Or, not men of violence, but men of valor, men of strength and courage in the face of evil and trouble and danger, who may tote the sword, but understanding God's wisdom and God's principles, there's a time to use the sword and there's a time not to use the sword, but ultimately our trust is not in the sword, our trust is in the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this study. And as we look around in a world filled with violence, violent men, music, television, video games, and reality, help us, Lord, not to be men of violence who threaten with the sword and trust in the sword, but men of valor. Men who will protect our families, our homes. Men who will serve. Men, Lord, who may tote the sword, but recognize that it's an awesome responsibility to do so. And there's a time to fight. And there's a time not to fight. We ask, Lord, that we wouldn't be as Lamech, who are arrogant and unrepentant, who take matters into our own hands, take vengeance and revenge to the ultimate extreme. Help us, Lord, to be temperate and to be wise, and help us to only fight those battles that would be right and just in your eyes. We ask, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.